With this setup, we effectively allowed our player to peek into things, uh, also to move into things partially, and that opens up a bunch of things that we need to be able to handle with this approach here. So to demonstrate a few of them, one if we walk up to a, a box like this and stick our head into it we can now just peek into it if I continue I will eventually get popped out but in the meantime I can actually just stand here and peek which is not something you want your player to do another thing <clears throat> is Things like this, you can actually hold them very close to your face and then you can look kind of through them. And the same goes for the table here, of course. Oh, okay, maybe not. Well, there you go. So the way I've decided to go about this is to add a collision capsule for the camera as well. So I'm going to add a sphere collision here and call this camera collision. Now you would think that it would be correct to parent it to the camera. So once you have a, this attached to the camera, we can create a begin overlap and an end overlap. So if we just for now print out a statement here, you can see that it actually says hello constantly and that is actually as far as I can tell a bug I haven't really figured out why because this should technically only fire once it starts and it begins overlapping and not constantly like behaving like kind of a hit so what I decided to do with this instead was to set it on the same level here and then move it manually So for that, I'm going to create a new custom event here called <clears throat> event tick uh, check camera overlap. Okay. So we need a few things here. This check camera overlap. First of all, it needs to update the position of the camera collision here to be equal to the camera uh, position. So if you just reintroduce the print statement here, we see it didn't say uh, hello a lot of times. Okay. So the next thing we also want to do is to save a variable keeping whether or not we are overlapping with something. So we're going to create a boolean called is camera overlapping and we're going to set that to true here and we're also going to set this to false once we don't overlap it anymore so that way we can check on tick if we are overlapping or not 
and build our logic on top of that. So for now, I'm just going to make a very simple version of this. So on my tick here, on my camera, I'm going to uh, set a post process uh, setting like this. And I'm going to make post process setting and I'm going to pick a few things in here. So the scene color, color tint. Uh, this one is one of those I'm going to pick out. So I want to make this, I'm not going to make this super pretty for this video here, but um, I'm going to leave that up to you to do. So once we overlap with something, I'm going to set it to completely black and once we don't overlap, I'm going to set this to completely white again, like that. So, I need more space. What the fuck? Okay, anyway, there we go. So if we're going to make a branch here, if we are overlapping, then we want to set this to be black. And otherwise, we're going to set it to white. And right now, it's looking pretty darn black. And that is because of our collision channels. So if we take a look at what it overlaps with, we can see that it's set to overlap all dynamic. So right now, it's colliding with our collision capsule. So we don't want to overlap with a pawn. And we probably don't want to overlap with these things here but we do want to overlap with well static well dynamic physics bodies and maybe vehicles and destructibles but i don't have the, those in my scene right now so i'm going to keep that just like this so you can see if i put my hands uh, to my face right now it's also going to turn black it is because of the collision uh, the grab sphere on my hands and I have to warn people when doing this you don't want to switch it just like I do right now because it's very confusing when it just switches from normal to pitch black so you want to do a, an F interp or whatever uh, blurb these values here so it kind of fast gets black but still um, not too fast and not too slow. Okay, so we need to ignore a few things in here. Um, one of them will be the the hands, I believe. So I know of a few ways to do this, but I think the easiest way. I can think of is to just tag my control or my actor here. So in this case, it's my BP motion um, controller and just say we have a tag in here. So I'm going to add a tag to this called no collision just for easiness in here. It can be a little bit um, confusing when you have lots of these tags here. So beware, uh, don't overuse them. Uh, it's kind of like collision channels. You can quickly get lost in them. So from other actor, drag out and get tag. Let's get components. Get, uh, 
has tag actor has tag that one so you can see say oops no collision Actually, let me give it a better name. Ignore collision is really generic, so ignore camera collision like that. It's a little bit long, but doesn't really matter. The most important thing is that it's descriptive. So and also you want to. Um, Oops, not like that. You want to only set this if this has not. This tag here. Sorry about the mess. I confused myself there for a moment. So you want to have the same logic down here. something like this okay so you see now I when I put my controller to my face it, I don't fade to black if I stick my face into a box now though I don't see anything take a box and bring it well pretty okay this this box is definitely too big <laughs> now this uh, sphere is definitely too big so let's make it a little bit smaller so it's 32 units so let's give it like seven centimeters or so Now it's not working. <laughs> Great. Oh, huh, that's weird. interesting okay I've got an idea why this is happening okay so this is actually an interesting thing I just realized if we look at the map here uh, we can see that the boxes are looking like this if we zoom into the boxes themselves we can see there's something inside it and this is a blocking uh, or navigation modifier volume and that is actually what we end up colliding with so in this case we're not colliding with the actual box itself because if we take a look at the uh, collision settings it says generate overlap event not set so if this is not set then it, this will not generate overlap events so in order to get this to work we need to set uh, generate overlap events for all of these so in my case i'm going to set this to all of these so that it's going to generate an overlap event And right now I'm just going to do this for the white boxes. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the brushes that we have on the scene because they also have another problem that we haven't addressed yet. So, and by the way, I think seven should be fine.
There we go. So this is hopefully going to keep players from trying to peek into things. Um, as I said, you want to do this gradually, this fade to black, pretty fast, but gradually still. So your player don't get uh, disoriented. So your player still needs to be able to find the way out. And uh, you need to give them one way or the other to find out where the exit of the box is. Uh, but that is uh, something that you can implement yourself. These are the principles that are used for this. So the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be, let's see, you have 15 minutes. Actually, this is something I'm going to postpone to the next video. But that is a way of making sure that we don't stick or hide inside a wall. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching.